friends, in today's video, I am so excited to be bringing you a Dollar Tree Valentine's Day DIY. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely stick around. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. My name's Melissa. I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs. Farmhouse decor is my specialty. I actually made this farmhouse sign right here with Dollar Tree signs. So you don't wanna miss out on any future content that I have coming. I am so excited for the spring season. Spring is my favorite season of the entire year and I love to DIY for it. So definitely click that red subscribe button, tap the bell and all, that way you're notified every single time I upload. That way you don't miss a crafty moment. Also, I wanna thank Noom for sponsoring today's video. I'll talk to you guys a little bit about them. Please stick around. Everybody keeps asking me about my weight loss and I am going to share with you guys. So with all that being said, don't forget to do all the youtube -y things. Hit that thumbs up. That really helps my channel to grow. And with all that being said, let's jump into today's DIYs. Okay friends, starting off with DIY number one, I take this My Love plaque from Dollar Tree. I wasn't sure what to call it for a minute, but I guess it's kind of just like a little decor piece. And originally I was just going to flip that heart around and use the sparkly part, but I decided to just pop that off. Don't worry. It comes off super easy. And then I take my quick dry tool. And although this doesn't get hot, if you get close enough, it does warm up the sticker enough to pull it up. And then of course, these Dollar Tree stickers are so annoying. They left residue behind. So I just took my mini zip sander and I sanded that smooth. Next, I go in with my Dixie Belle cotton and I did end up just painting the front because the back, I did get it smooth, but not smooth enough to my liking. So I just used the front. It wasn't a big deal. And then I cut up my chalk couture transfer that I wanted to use. Keep in mind that all the chalk couture items that I use will be linked in the description box below in my link tree, as well as in the comments. I will pin a comment with the link and now is the perfect time to get your chalk couture We're having a major sale and you can get free items with your purchases Depending upon how much you spend and for my club couture members you guys get even more of a discount off of the discounted items, but I will leave all that information in the description box as well. If I can remember, if not, leave it in the comments and I will do it quickly. So anyway, I transferred on all of my images on the front that I liked. So the lips in my gold, the Valentine in my black, and then kisses obviously in my candy apple red. And then for that sparkly heart that, that was on the top, I ended it I ended up painting it with my Dixie Belle Barn Red. And then once that was dry, I went in with my Chalk Couture uh, Valentine Mini Transfer, the one that says you and me. And I did an ombre effect with the gold at the top, the white at the bottom. And that's super easy to do. Just put your colors how you want them. So if you want to do two colors, do obviously I did gold and white. And then to join those colors, I just put a little bit of water on the end of my finger. And then I just kind of swooshed in the middle and wiped off the excess to a paper towel, pulled it up to reveal a gorgeous image. Next, I just distressed this heart with my zip sander. And then I distressed the blocks with my antique wax by Waverly. To finish this off, I made a shoestring bow out of this ribbon that I got from Walmart. Now, I love the way that this looked, but then I forgot that I had this other heart ribbon. It was a little bit too thick, so I just folded it over three times on itself, made a bow, glued it down to the middle, and then glued the original bow to the middle as well. And you guys, I just love the way that this turned out. If you guys have been around for any amount of time, you know that I don't really decorate for Valentine's Day or DIY for it, but after this year, I am super excited to decorate and DIY for years to come. So over the last few months, I have been getting a ton of comments, DMs, saying, Melissa, you look so good. You've lost so much weight. How did you do it? And I'm so excited to be partnering with Noom today. I want to thank Noom once again for sponsoring today's video. And what I love most about Noom and made me commit to them 
and quit my other diet that I was on to try Noom was that Noom is not a diet at all. I know that sounds crazy. But what Noom does is they leverage psychology, science, and community to make weight loss and a healthy lifestyle more enjoyable. Noom also encourages you to find the balance in the things that you absolutely cannot give up Yes, minor Reese's pretzels. And Noom has been absolutely amazing in helping me not feel bad about still enjoying my favorite snacks. So one of my favorite features is the fitness tracker as well as the water intake tracker. Both of those things I'm really terrible at. And Noom helps me to keep track of my progress as well as keep sight of my goals. Another really cool feature that I absolutely love is you can also save your recipes. That way when you're cooking and you're tracking your meals, all you have to do is just add your favorite meals with just the click of a few buttons. I also really want to touch on the psychology piece of Noom. Noom has a really strong curriculum that uses short, easy to understand lessons that are super achievable. Weight loss was not just losing the weight and just looking good. It really was a lifestyle change. When I embarked on this journey, I was a little bit nervous. Noom but made me feel so much more comfortable. You also have a coach, which is a live person to give you support, help you with recipes, any questions you may have. The live support person is always there and I love that so much. So the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about are Noom's lessons. They help you to understand how to learn and love new habits that add value to your life. So my favorite lesson was breaking the behavior chain. So what I do is I obviously have bad behaviors because we all do. So when I do my bad behavior or give in to my bad behavior, I should say, I beat myself up and then I think all my progress is ruined and it's a whole thing. So Noom is here to help you with that as well as me and since taking this course I feel so much better when I make bad decisions okay friends so the last file got corrupted that's why I look a little bit different and it is the next day but I'm so excited for you guys if you guys want to try out Noom today and get your evaluation get started with them today go to noom.com slash all things crafty or check the link in the description box again that is go to noom.com slash all things crafty or check the link in the description box below and once again I want to thank Noom for sponsoring today's video moving on to DIY number two this is another super easy one I take one of these barn plaques from Dollar Tree I love them so much I grabbed like four when I was there that way I that way I would have them for future projects and I knew that I wanted to redo this so I start by simply taking off that barn piece it is a very, very thin piece of wood, so you just want to be very careful when you're peeling that up. Next, I painted that with my Ink Waverly Chalk Paint, and once that was dry, I went in with my PS I Love You transfer. Look how cute this little typewriter is. So I transferred on the typewriter itself and like the paper part with my white chalk paste. I wish I had done the buttons in my gold because I did the I Love You in the gold and the heart in my candy apple red, but that's okay. I can always go in later and redo it. Now, as you can see here, I kind of went a little light-handed with my paste because I wanted it to be distressed when I pulled it up. The first time I pulled it up, it was a little bit too distressed, so I just laid it back down quickly, um, put more paste on, and then lifted it up, and I loved the way that it turned out. Next, I glue that roof piece back down to the top, and I paint the roof piece with my Barn Red by Dixie Belle. To finish this piece off, once that roof piece was dry, of course, I go in with my mini chip brush and my uh, cotton Dixie Belle paint. I'm so used to saying Waverly that my mouth wants to say Waverly, but that's the wrong thing, so I like trip over my words. Anyway, I go in with my Dixie Belle cotton paint and my mini chip brush. I dry brush all the way around that roof piece as well as the bottom piece, and that was it, you guys. I love the way that this turned out. Again, you can find this transfer and paste in the comments as well as in the description box, and as always, let me know which project in today's video video is your favorite.
for DIY number three. Now, usually I have a piece and I pick a transfer to go with it, but for this project, I had a transfer I really wanted to use and I needed something to go with it. Now, Chalk Couture sells the block sets that go with this transfer, but I wanted to make this project much cheaper and make the blocks myself. So I took these large wall plaques from Dollar Tree. They're the longer, thicker ones. I laid them out on my signs. For the bottom hugs and kisses, I only needed one one, but for the top two, I needed to cut two pieces each and glue them together. So I just measured them, cut them down to size, and then glued them together with my wood glue. Now the third piece, my uh, battery was dead, so I did have to cut that after I glued these together, but that was no big deal. And if you didn't see, I also did cut that little truck off of one of them. I want to make a project out of that, so I did end up cutting that off, but I'll show you guys that in a minute and once my blocks were dry or the glue was the wood glue was dried then I went in with my barn red my cotton as well as my ink Waverly chalk paint and I just painted all of my blocks one of each color Once those were dry and my OCD stops bothering me and I have this hugs and kisses in the right spot in the bottom piece, then I go in with my gold paste and I transfer on the end. And then for the hugs and kisses, I go in with my candy apple red. And this is my favorite part about Chalk Couture, you guys, is squeegeeing on this paste. And then you squeegee up the excess and pull up your transfer to reveal that gorgeous image. I promise you it it never gets old and if I could chalk in my sleep I totally would. For the next block set I needed to sand down that middle piece. I forgot to mention the images on these are just paper so when you cut them and you glue them together make sure that the paper is smooth on the edges or else you'll have the same issue I did and then you'll have to sand it down go back in and repaint it so like I said just skip that step by sanding down your edges. For the red block set I went in with the February 14th I transferred on the white for the heart I transferred it on with my peony and then I forgot that I want to do ombre, so I tried it, but I realized that it wasn't going to work, so I just put the gold over top, thinking that it would just be like a shimmery pink, yet yeah, no, that didn't really work either. I didn't mix up my white, so it didn't really go through the transfer. It was a mess, but guess what? No big deal, you guys. All I did was peel it up. I dried my image really good. I took my transfer to the sink, washed my transfer really well, dried it and then came back and redid it and it looks absolutely gorgeous. I transferred on the February with my white paste and then for the heart I transferred it on in an ombre effect with the gold and the pink and again to do that you place your colors down the way you like them and then to join those colors you put a little bit of water on the end of your finger. You join the colors in a circular motion and then you're going to you're going to dab off what's on your finger onto a paper towel and then you can peel up your image and it looks absolutely amazing. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys are going to attempt this ombre effect. Now for this b white block set, for the XOX obviously, I go in with my black chalk paste. Now this is a brand new jar. This, the last jar I had was the same jar that I had when I started Chalk Couture over a year ago so that just goes to show how long this chalk paste lasts so i transfer on the chat bubble with my black and then for the xoxo i just randomly chose two different o's and transferred those on with my candy or not candy apple my shimmer red shimmer crimson it's called and then for the rest of the letters i transferred that on with my gold
Now, this is why it's so important to make sure that your surface is dry underneath because when I transferred on that February 14th, the red wasn't completely dry and it did pull up the paint a little bit, which was no big deal. I just cleaned it up with that same barn red, but you can skip that step once again by just making sure that your surface is totally dry. And then that was it, you guys. Look how cute this block set set look how cute this black set came out. I absolutely love it so much. Just because you buy Chalk Couture transfers doesn't necessarily mean that you need to buy their surfaces. That's what my favorite thing to do is to buy cheap surfaces, buy the transfers, and make high-end decor. Okay, friends, so last week I forgot to include channels to check out. So on this week's channels to check out, I would love for you guys to go over, check out Monner's Market. You guys, she is a dear friend of mine. She's so sweet and kind and genuine, and I absolutely love her projects. Here she is, look how cute she is. Go over to her channel, check her out, let her know that I sent you. Let's support her, you guys. She has almost 4,000 subscribers and still is not yet monetized. So let's go over and help my dear friend get monetized and with all that being said, let's jump back into today's video. Moving right along to DIY number four. This one is so super easy too, but I absolutely love the end result. So I start by taking one of these little heart decor pieces. I don't know what you want to call it. I know you guys will let me know in the comments, but I start by just taking it apart and I take all of that glitter off of the skewer. Now I'm DIYing inside the house right now. Um, I'm not going to go into it, but anyway, I did not have another skewer and it was really snowing outside so I didn't feel like running out so I just cleaned that up and then I took off that little edge on the top it was only held on by a little bit of glue and then I take a piece of scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby I trace out the top part and then I also kind of mark on the bottom um, how big I need it and just make a rough cut then I paint the top and the bottom with my ink Waverly chalk paint just so that way if any is showing through the scrapbook paper you won't see that pink glitter and then I just make sure that the top is reinforced with some hot glue. Next I kind of wrap the bottom on an angle and then once again I secure that down with some hot glue and cut off the excess and then to cut off the excess at the top and bottom I make two cuts on either side and then I just trim down going as close to that edge with my scissors as I can. So for the next part, I was not really sure how I wanted to do these hearts. I really wanted to do two kind of like on an angle or maybe even three, but I just really couldn't get these grapevine hearts to kind of sit together nicely. And I was not going to sit there forever and try to deal with them. So I just, I, I just decided on one. So I start by sticking my skewer back into the, I don't know what you want to call it, decor piece and, or I should say foam piece. And I just set that aside. Next, I forgot to mention to save that piece that we took off at the top. So I measured out a piece of ribbon that I thought I liked, cut it down and then glued it to that piece and then glued it back down to the top of this. And it wasn't quite long enough. So I just cut an extra piece to connect that piece in the back. And you guys are going to see here in a minute that I do end up changing this out. But if you like this pattern, then totally go for it. But for me and my decor, I just thought that it was a little bit much against that scrapbook paper. But again, that's just me. 
Next, I go in with my grapevine heart and just some random greenery. I do believe this is boxwood from Walmart, but don't quote me on that. And I just pull some pieces from the pick and cut off the ends. I then start by gluing it at the bottom of my heart and then wrapping it around. I was just gonna glue it to the front, but you couldn't really see the grapevine part, and I wanted that to show through, which is why I wrapped this, and I did that with five different pieces. That's how much it took. And then once I was done wrapping the heart with the greenery, then I took these little fairy lights that I got from a big pack from Amazon, which is also linked in my link tree in my Amazon store in the description box. I then just start by wrapping those lights all randomly around this. Again, I was going to wrap it around just the grapevine part, but I ultimately decided to wrap them like this and I'm so glad I did because I love the way that it turned out but I left just a little bit of the excess light in the back that way I could glue the heart to the skewer and then glue the lights down the back and then kind of wrap them around and glue the battery pack to the back as well. Now here is where I change out that top part. I had this burlap and buffalo check ribbon that I thought matched much better and now my eyes are happy when I look at this finally. You ever have those projects where you just kind of can't figure out what to change or what? Um, that's what I did with this. I had that red ribbon and I just kept looking at it and I was like, ah, I don't really like it. So when I changed it, I knew that it that this was the finish of this project. I forgot to mention that I did glue a piece of jute around that top edge, just so that way you couldn't see the foam part. And that was it for this one, you guys. I love this cute little heart topiary, so let me know in the comments down below what you think. Moving on to DIY number five, I take this love sign from Dollar Tree. I almost said love plaque. And this is new this year. I don't know about your store, but my stores have never seen this size sign. If you guys want to see a haul from this per particular day, let me know in the comments down below because it's a different day from my last haul and I would love to bring that to you. But of course, I take the hanger off and paint it with my Dixie Belle cotton. Once that was dry, then I peel back my transfer. Now, this one is a D size, so it's pretty big. The bigger ones, if you can peel it down and then fuzz just the portion that you're going to use and then lay your sign on that part, it's much, much easier. But if you have to pull it away completely, it's no big deal. Just lay it sticky side up on your surface and then um, you can fuzz it that way instead of trying to um, lay your transfer down on your fuzzing cloth when your transfer is as big as this one. So I just lay that down and transfer on the hearts with my uh, shimmer crimson as well as my black chalk paste. And then if you can see here that that is a piece of cardboard, you guys, from those little love blocks and home blocks on the other side that I did last week. Um, this is the cardboard that came so that way it doesn't like shift around and it's really really nice cardboard so i just cut it down to size with my exact or my utility knife and then i paint it with a distressed coat of my ink waverly chalk paint and then once that was dry i fuzzed the transfer that i liked again i will have this linked in the description box below and this one has four different sayings on it so you could get upwards of like 200 different projects out of this one transfer and then i took these hearts from dollar tree for two of them i did the natural color and the red and then for one of them i did the red and the natural color and then you guys are going to see here that i don't know why i use these little tiny uh beads i guess i was just thinking that i didn't use them and i thought that it would work but <laughs> You guys, when I was filming or when I was editing this, I was like, gosh, I don't know what you were doing, Melissa. I guess you were having like bead therapy or something because I just kept adding beads, adding beads <laughs> because it just would not sit right. So 
Anyway, don't make the same mistake I did and just use like a Jenga block or something that's going to keep your piece even and you won't have to glue 10 million different pieces just to keep one upright. <laughs> anyway, once I was done gluing them down, then once again I went in with my Hello Valentine transfer and I transferred that on with my white paste. Again, that is a piece of cardboard, you guys. You can literally virtually chalk on anything. It's insane. If you guys are not following me on TikTok, um, around Christmas time, I took you guys along with me and chalked all of the furniture for my kids. I did the microwave, I did the bathroom vanity, and some other things. So head on over to my TikTok if you haven't seen that. But anyway, here I am just gluing some beads down for the Hello Valentine part, and then I glued that down to the sign, and then I glued down my black pieces. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I did glue down the hearts to three of my chalkable chips. Now, I didn't have wood rounds inside, which is why I just grabbed for the chalkable chips, but if I was in the shed, I would have used my wood rounds from Dollar Tree, painted them black, and then attached the hearts. To finish this off, I just wrapped some jute around each of the ends, and I secured those with some hot glue, as well as I made a simple double jute bow and glued that down to the middle heart. Look how cute this turned out, you guys. I love it. I'm so in love with this sign. I cannot wait to keep it for years to come. Let me know what you guys think of this sign in the comments down below. Can you guys even tell that that Hello Valentine part is a piece of cardboard or is it totally noticeable? Okay, friends, so for DIY number six, you guys, this one is so easy. I probably didn't even need to show a tutorial, but I made it, so I figured I would include it. So I just took that little piece of the truck that I cut off. I glued down a grapevine heart on the side to the top, and that was it for this one. So do you call this a DIY? I don't know. Again, let me know in the comments. So anyway, you guys, thank you so, so much for stopping by. If you made it this far, please leave a red heart with XOXO in the comments. If you can't find a heart, just leave XOXO and I'll know that you're still here. I appreciate you guys so much. If you guys want to support my channel and buy me a coffee, don't forget that I have my buy me a coffee link in the description box below. Also, you can support my channel by shopping my links in my link tree, my chalk couture, my Amazon, but you don't have to do that. You can support me just by watching, clicking that thumbs up button, subscribing, um, watching the ads, the 30 seconds, clicking the ads. There's so many different ways you can help your favorite creators and whichever way you support me, I appreciate you so much. Also, don't forget to to follow the link for Noom in the description box for all of you that are ready to start your weight loss journey. And if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning and amazing and worthy. And I love you guys with all my heart and soul. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Don't forget to check out my other content popping up right here on the left-hand side that YouTube recommends that you watch while you're waiting for my next upload.